the mercy to the world 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 sallallahu alayhi wa sallam alhamdulillahi rabbil alamin wa salatu wa salam ala sayyidil mursalin اما بعد فاعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم بليز ريبيت افتر مي الصلاه والسلام عليك يا رسول الله وعلى اليك واصحابك يا حبيب الله الصلاه والسلام عليك يا نبي الله وعلى اليك واصحابك يا نور الله صلى الله تعالى على محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم Viewers of Madni Channel, welcome back to YOLO, the mercy to the world. SubhanAllah, we're on a magnificent journey through the life of the best of creation, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the best of all lives. And alhamdulillah, last week we covered the battle of Khaybar and now we're going to move on. But before we do, let me start with a beautiful blessing, Abdurudipak. Nabi Akrim sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that on the day of judgment, there will be no shade. But three people will be in the shade of the Arsh of Allah How magnificent is their status? What a great privilege that will be, subhanAllah. Who are those three people? Like Akrim sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, the first is the one who relieves a distress of my ummati, helps somebody in his need. Second, the one who revives my sunnah. And third, the one who sends the Pak upon me in abundance. So we should try to help whoever we can. You know, when somebody is in difficulty, they, they may ask you for help, they may not, but be there for them. If you can donate to some good cause, even if it's a little bit, do it. Maybe, hopefully, inshallah, we will form part of this hadith in Mubarak. Then, if you can revive a sunnah, subhanAllah, the most beautiful sunnah of Nabi Akrim sallallahu alayhi wa sallam for my Islamic brothers is this beautiful sunnah of the Dari Mubarak, the Beard Sharif. So you should all adopt this beautiful sunnah. This will be a beacon of light in your grave. Then the third, reciting the Rudi Pak upon Nabi Akrim sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam in abundance. Subhanallah. That is also the reason for getting the shade of the arsh of Allah azza wa on the day of judgment. Salu ala al-habib sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This week's question, let's see what it is. Subhanallah, which is the first masjid in Islam? Which was the first mosque that was built? The first masjid of Islam? Answer towards the end, inshallah. We're going to move to a beautiful kalam by our beloved Rukni Shura Abdul Habib by At-Tari Dhamad Barakatum al Aliyah. Bika khayr al-khalqi kullihi mi Mawla ya salli wa sallim da'iman Abadan ala habib Bika khayr al-khalqi kullihi mi Muhammadun sayyidu al-kawnayni wa thaqalayni Muhammadun sayyidu al-kawnayni wa thaqalayni Wal fariqayni min urbin wa min ajami Mawla ya salli wa sallim da'iman Abadan ala habib Bika khayr al-khalqi kullihimi Mawla ya salli wa sallim da'iman Abadan ala habib Bika khayr al-khalqi kullihimi Huwa al-habibu al-lazhi turja shafa'atuhu Huwa al-habibu al-lazhi turja shafa'atuhu لكل هول من الأهوال مقتحمي مولا يا صلي وسلم دائما أبدا على حبي بك خير الخلق كلهم مولا يا صلي وسلم دائما أبدا على حبي 
Subhanallah, what a beautiful kalam. You know, whenever you listen to the Qasida Abu Dashif, Alhamdulillah, it warms your heart. And it's a universal one. No matter where you go, even if you're in the Middle East, 
This is one thing that everybody understands. It's kind of almost a universal Durud salam that everybody recognizes. And uh, what a lot of people do is they, when they make dua, um, they recite this as well. Subhanallah. Uh, you've had a beautiful recitation by our Rukhni Shura Abdul Habib by Subhanallah. May Allah Azawajal give us all the ability um, to recite through the park as much as we can. Salu ala al Habib, sallallahu ta'ala. Ala Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa We're going to move to our first segment, inshallah. Azawajal. Salu ala al Habib, sallallahu ta'ala. Ala Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa The mercy to the world. So you remember that Alhamdulillah last week we were blessed with Rukhne Shura and we uh, went through the battle of Khaybar and how there were some tribes who had entrenched themselves, they had a number of castles and they were causing plotting against the Muslims and Akka Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam marched upon them to stop them gathering different tribes from Arabia and attacking Medina al Manabra. The Muslims uh, were victorious as it Ali radiallahu ta'ala was blessed with holding the flag and then the great miracle of Sayyidina Ali radiallahu ta'ala when he took the castle door as a shield and with the powers that Allah has given to his beloved people, those that are close to him, Alhamdulillah, showed in a great saintly miracle by defending and taking that castle, SubhanAllah. Uh, now straight after this, this conquest shattered the strength of these different tribes and these different religions who were coming together against the Muslims. And the might of the Muslims now started to resonate throughout the Arabian Peninsula. But there were still pockets of stubborn people who still wanted to put an end to Islam. So what they'd done is they'd forced the Muslims into a corner. The Muslims, to protect themselves, had fought a number of battles. And every time Allah, Azza wa Jalla, through the blessings of his beloved Habib Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, had made them successful. So after this battle, Nabi Akrim Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam initially said to the tribes of Khaybar, look, just go from here now. They pleaded with Akka Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and they promised to, they gave um, things to the Muslims and then wanted to reach an agreement. And Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, being the merciful prophet, um, didn't want to just send them away from their own lands. So Akka Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam accepted their request not to banish them. And they said, look, we promise that half of what we grow, the crops, we will give to you. So every year, Akka Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would send Hazrat Sayyidina Abdullah ibn Rawaha radiallahu ta'ala anhu. He would go there, he would split everything into two, and then he would give them the choice and say, which half do you want? And by seeing the dealings of the Muslims and seeing the justice of Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, alhamdulillah, they would say to each other that their world is only uh, at peace because of this beautiful Habib Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Some of them didn't even accept Islam, didn't accept Nabi Akrim Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam as their prophet, but still praise Nabi Akrim Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam because of their justice and their truthfulness. How amazing is that? So um, the time goes on. So Hazrat uh, Abdullah ibn Umar narrates that after the conquest of Khaybar, um, they agreed this truce with the tribes there and one of the terms of the agreement was that these tribes would hand over all of their gold and silver. They would keep their livestock and those who were banished, because there were some real um, deceptive people and some were banished and some wanted to leave anyway. So they said, you can leave, take your stuff, but only what you can load and don't hide anything. And yet these tribes are so um, deceptive that they tried to hide things. Now, one of their leaders, Hoyei ibn Akhtab, he um, was one of the leaders. And what he'd done is he'd hidden a load of gold and precious items. And he claimed that he didn't have anything. And when questioned about, because the, the other people would say, you know, he had a lot of gold. Oh, we used it all in the battle. And he was lying. Nabi Akrim sallallahu alayhi wa re received revelation. Allah Azza wa revealed to the beloved Habib sallallahu alayhi wa sallam where he had hidden the gold. So the Muslims were sent there. They collected it. And when they brought him back, it was obvious that he was trying to deceive. And he was one of those people who was orchestrating these um, fitnas, these, this disorder in the land. And so Akka Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa had him put to the sword. Now, 
um, the captives were well treated. And, you know, the justice, seeing the justice of Islam, the, the mercy of Nabi Akrim sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, these people started to come into the fold of Islam. These people started to, alhamdulillah, see the beauty of Islam. The captives of war were treated very well. Now, when the maids, the, the, the female captives were brought, um, Hazrat uh, Sayyidina Safiya radiallahu ta'ala anha was brought. And she was a noble lady from a, a, a very high lineage from these tribes. And she was, her father was a leader, her husband was a leader, and they had been martyred. So when she was brought as a captive, um, the, there was loads of maids, and some of the companions asked Akka Karim sallam, for these maid servants. Hazrat Sayyidina Daya Kalbi comes to the court of Nabi Akrim and asks for a maid. So the best of creation said, you choose the maid you want. He chooses Hazrat Safiya But then the other companions, through an inspiration from Allah because Allah wanted something else. The other companions said, O oh, Prophet of Allah, you have given Safiya, a noble lady from the tribes of Quraiza and Al Nadir, to Dahiya. However, there is nobody more appropriate for her than you. At this, Nabi Akrim sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam said to Hazrat Dayya Kalbi radiallahu ta'ala, you choose one of the others. And Hazrat Safiya radiallahu ta'ala anha accepted Islam. Nabi Akrim sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam freed her, she accepted Islam. And then she came into the nakah of Akka Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam's walima mubarak was done consisting of dates, clarified butter and cheese, subhanallah. So this walima was done after the battle of Khaybar as well. Now, for a few days, Akka Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam remained there. The, the communities there started to see the beauty of Islam, but there were still these elements who were, didn't like Islam inside. On the face of it, they were showing it. So one lady, uh, Zainab bin Harith, the wife of uh, Salam ibn Mishkam, he, she invites the best of creation to a house for a meal. And on the face of it, they're pretending to be nice. But what she does, she poisons the meal. And there is a companion, Sayyidina Bishr, Radiallahu who's with Nabi Akrim Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and they sit down and they eat. The meat speaks to the best of creation. Akka Karim Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam takes one morsel, eats it, and as Akka Karim Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is going for the second morsel, the meat actually spoke and said, Ya Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi do not eat me, there's poison in me. Unfortunately, Hazrat Sayyidina Bishr Radiallahu Ta'ala Anhu had already consumed and it um, proved fatal. He was martyred. When um, the Tribes were asked, what is this? You invite us to a meal and you poison it? Their excuse was, and this is the type of deceptive people they were. They said that, oh, we wanted to test whether you were really a prophet of Allah because we know that poison doesn't affect the prophets of Allah And so this is, was just a test. If you were not a prophet, it would have affected you and therefore we would have been saved from misguidance. But now you are the prophet, we know that. And yet their deception was such that that would mean, okay, you've tested the Prophet ﷺ. He ﷺ has eaten a morsel. Nothing has happened to Nabi Akrim ﷺ. And therefore you should accept Islam. They didn't. This was their deceptiveness. Hazrat Bishr is, is martyred. So Nabi Akrim ﷺ, who's never taken revenge, because that, that um, morsel that Akka Akrim ﷺ took, the scholars actually write, that it remained causing trouble to Nabi Akrim Sallallahu throughout their life, Mubarak. They always felt that, that the effect of that poison, it was such a hard and harsh poison. Um, but Akka Akrim Sallallahu uh, miracle, Mujza, that obviously it didn't impact him in any way. But Nabi Akrim Sallallahu Alaihi said it did affect me. But although Nabi Akrim Sallallahu Alaihi never took a revenge for anybody who tried to hurt them in any way, even those who martyred their daughters or you know chewed the liver of their beloved uncle, Nabi Akrim Sallallahu Alaihi forgave. But on this occasion, Nabi Akrim Sallallahu Alaihi said, "No, I'm going to take that because you've killed Sayyidina Bishr. Forget me. I'm not going to take revenge." You know, Akka Akrim Sallallahu was the mercy to the world. The fact that Sayyidina Bishr who was martyred, the woman who had put poison in, she was put to the sword. Then, shortly after that, they come uh, after Khaybar, and you remember right at the beginning when the situation in Mecca, um, many, many episodes ago, we discussed it was the Muslims were being persecuted and tortured, and they were, they were you know, hung and dragged and everything else, and they were deprived of food. And Nabi Akrim had given permission 
for the Muslims to migrate to Abyssinia, Habsha, and then the, the Kuffar went after them. You remember that part. And the Kuffar went after them and the king of uh, Abyssinia, Najashi, said, no, these are good people, and that, that, that took place. Well, as soon as they finished this battle of Khaybar and they were coming back, Alhamdulillah, the Muslims from Abyssinia now realized, obviously, that Alhamdulillah, Islam was spreading. It was safer to come back. They migrated back from Abyssinia, modern-day Ethiopia, all the way back to Medina al Munawwarah. Alhamdulillah. Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam saw Sayyidina Jafar radiallahu ta'ala anhu, and he was the brother of Hazrat Ali radiallahu ta'ala anhu. He kissed him on his forehead between his eyes and expressed great love. And look at the love that Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had. He said, um, I do not know which makes me happier. You know, conquering Khaybar or seeing you. Look at the expression of love. And this was Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. You know, uh, wherever Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam went, the words were so beautiful that it made everybody happy. And I've got another example a bit later on where there is a certain situation and Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam just deals with it in such a beautiful way that nobody's upset. So, and Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam then granted these people who had migrated in the way of Islam, who had left the lands of Mecca uh, to seek a better place because of the torture. Akka Karim Sallallahu Alaihi look at the mercy, actually granted them some of the booty of war and distributed that amongst them as well. And the other companions didn't say, Ya Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi we fought in Khaybar, we have earned this booty, you know, why are you giving? No, this was Islam. Everybody was just glad to see these uh, people who had migrated in the way of Islam. And indeed, Akka Kareem Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam actually gave him the title, the people of two migrations. So the first two, Ethiopia, Habsha, and then the one back to Medina to Manavra as well, subhanAllah. Different um, rules of Shariat after Khaybar, Nabi Kareem Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam gave the Ummah. Um, including how, which birds were halal, which wasn't, and um, what, was, what was haram to consume, etc. Now, the Battle of Wadi Qurra. Following on from the Battle of Khaybar, Nabi Akrim sallallahu alayhi wa sallam traveled to the Wadi Qurra. Now, this was a strange place because they weren't there to fight. It was just passing. But um, it's between Taima and Fadak. And there were some settlements there, some villages and tribes. Now, the Muslims just wanted to go through, but these tribes were very hostile. They started to fire arrows. Nabi Karim Sallallahu Alaihi invited them to Islam. They didn't stop. And indeed, a companion, Sayyidina Middam radiallahu ta'ala, a slave of Nabi Karim Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, was martyred by an arrow. So these people were just very strange. They were ready to fight and they wouldn't listen to anything else. Now, Nabi Karim Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, again, despite this, responds by inviting to them to Islam and say, the same Muslims say, we're not here to fight. But then these people start to make lines, uh, battle trenches, battle lines. And so the Muslims reluctantly stood up and said, well, <laughs> we've tried everything else. They want to fight us. We've got, you know, we can't just run off. So they, they fought. And after a few days, um, the, uh, they eventually realized that they cannot fight the Muslims and they dropped their weapons. Um, fighting continued for a few days, and finally the Muslims got victory. They took the place, and again, Nabi Akrim Sallallahu mercy didn't just take the place and told them to get out or take their um, booty or anything like that. But what they said to them is, look, now that uh, we're here, we're going to invite you to Islam, but also you're going to have to pay jizya, which is um, the Islamic kind of tax. You're going to have to give half of your crops, like we've done with Khaybar. You're going to give half of your yearly crops to the Muslims. They did this, and they left. Now, when other tribes are in the Arabian Peninsula start to realize this and start to see that Khaybar has been taken over, Banu Nadir had happened earlier, then this, these tribes had tried to fight the Muslims and they had now um, succumbed to them, they started to uh, send agreements saying, we will do the same that they're doing. We will send the Muslims half of our crop in return for protection, etc. So there's a truce between Nabi Kareem Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and many, many other uh, tribes in the area. And Alhamdulillah, this is how now there was peace and Islam started to spread. Now, next year comes. You remember the Treaty of Hudaybiyah? There was a clause in there, you remember, that you can't do Umrah this year, but you can do Umrah next year. So that time came. 
It was the month of Dhul Qada, seventh year after uh, Hijrah, and an announcement is made. Akka Karim Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, all those who accompanied me to Hudaybiyah should accompany me for Umrah. And thus all the companions uh, got ready and wanted to go to Makkah al Mukarramah. Now, Nabi Karim Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, there were about 2,000 of them. Akka Karim Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam knew what the kuffar of Makkah were like and knew how deceptive they were. And so Nabi Karim Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, look, we need to be prepared should battle occur. So Akka Karim Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam had with them 2,000 companions, 100 on horseback, 60 camels were taken for sacrifice, but they had their swords and weapons with them. When the kuffar learnt of this, and this, they had the system where they had spies and everything else, the kuffar find out uh, that the Muslims are setting off from Medina and they are coming to uh, Makkah al Mukarramah for Umrah. They immediately dispatch a contingent to go and find out what's really going on. Are they coming to attack? Are they coming for Umrah? What's happening? This contingent gains information. They said, no, they are coming for Umrah. They meet Nabi Karim Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. As they say now, Muhammad ibn Maslama um, informs these people that, look, we're coming for Umrah and nothing else. Nabi Karim Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam then reaches the outskirts of Mecca. The main armor is taken off. Akka Karim Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam have their sword Mubarak. Um, this is about eight miles out, uh, Yajjaj. And then they proceed to the... Kaaba. Now from there they're reciting Labbaik all the way. Hazrat Sayyidina Abdullah ibn Rawaha. Um, Alhamdulillah, now you've got to kind of picture it that the Muslims, Alhamdulillah, have defended Medina in a number of battles. And since then, because of the Treaty of Hudaybiyah, they had freedom, so Islam is spreading. Then they've conquered Khaybar and they've conquered these other tribes, so Islam is getting stronger. Hazrat Abdullah ibn Rawaha, as he's marching into Mecca, it says this. Uh, to the kuffar, he says, O oh, sons of disbelievers, move out of the way. If you attempt to stop us today from entering, we shall assuredly use our swords against you. We will strike you with such might that it will sever your head from its resting place, and that which will also make a friend forget his friend. So he's kind of quite forceful. Hazrat Umar, he leans over and says, he says, stop. Sayyidina Abdullah bin Raha, he, he says, stop. And then he says, oh, Abdullah, how can you recite such poetry in front of the messenger of Allah in the harem of Allah Azza wa Jal? But, and he's, his thinking is different. He's thinking, Nabi Akrim sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is present here and he shouldn't be saying this. But Akka Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam teaches a very important lesson. Nabi Akrim sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says that, uh, oh, Umar, let him be. These words are more penetrating than arrows upon the kuffar. Subhanallah. And sometimes our scholars say that about our great Allah Hazrat Imam Ahmad Raza Khan Rahman, that they say that some of the, the shayri, some of the words, some of the, the kalam, some of the lectures of Sayyidi Allah Hazrat was so amazing that they pierced the hearts of those who had diseases. Subhanallah. So moving back. So Nabi Akrim sallallahu alayhi wa sallam entered the precinct of Makkah to perform Umrah. Now the kuffar of Makkah, they're saying, look at these people. They're not as strong as they used to be because Medina has a different climate and Medina has made them weak and they don't have the food and they don't have the strength. And so they're going to be kind of going around the Kaaba, uh, you know, in that humble way because they just don't seem to be. So Akka Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam knew of this. So Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ordered the companions to perform ittiba. That was the, keeping the right shoulder uncovered and draping the cloth over the left shoulder like we do when we go for Umrah and Hajj. And then Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ordered them to perform Ramal, which was the first three um, tawafs of the circumambulations of the Kaaba. Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, stand up and keep your heads up and walk as soldiers do, you know, in that mighty way. Subhanallah. So they stuck their chests out and they're doing tawaf, chins held high, and they wanted to show the people of Makkah that these were proper, proper soldiers of Islam. And they did. I mean, this was amazing. Amazing. Can you imagine that scene? You've got the kuffar of Makkah. And the, the scholars write, some of them left the harem because they, they felt, nausbillah, disgusted that the Muslims were there now. And they felt that they couldn't bear the sight of Muslims doing tawaf without any restrictions on them. And then the ones that were there didn't want to see this sight. So they, they were trying to, you know, look for weaknesses in the Muslims. But Nabi Akrim sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, I got the companions to walk with one shoulder uncovered, walk like 
warriors. And you could imagine that tawaf, wow. You know, these warriors and, you know, following Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, doing the tawaf of the Kaaba. And now the real beauty and the real foresight and the real wisdom of Sulay Hudaybiyah, the Treaty of Hudaybiyah was coming out because Muslims were a lot stronger than they were the year before. And the Kuffar now, because they had the treaty, they couldn't do anything. And the Muslims were now showing them their real strength, subhanAllah. Look at the amazing foresight of the beloved of Allah Azza wa Jal. And you know, Allah Azza wa Jal liked that ada, that um, you know, um, way of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the companions, those uh, actions so much that Allah Azza wa Jal said, you know, till the day of judgment, anybody who goes to my blessed haram and wants to do the tawaf of the Kaaba and wants to please me and wants to do my worship, he will do exactly as my Habib and his companions did. So when we all go up until the day of judgment, we will for the first three rounds, we will uncover our shoulder and we will march like strong men. Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. And you know, when you do it there, and you, you think SubhanAllah, that scene that Nabi Kareem Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is at the front and the companions are there and the kuffar of Mecca are watching from all the mountainsides. Because don't forget, um, at that time, the mountains were quite close to Haram. They've been moved back now in the expansion of the masjid and everything else. But at that time, they were quite... So the scholars write that they got all these kuffar around them watching these amazing people doing the tawaf of the Kaaba. SubhanAllah, what a tawaf it was as well. So that happened. Now they finish and the kuffar quickly remind them that the agreement said that you could stay for three days. Your three days are coming up, you need to leave. Akakrim sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, being the most truthful to their word, um, prepared to leave. Hazrat Sayyidatuna Umama, the daughter of Hazrat Sayyidina Amir Hamza don't forget he had been martyred on the, uh, in Ahud Sharif. She was in Makkah and she was an orphan child. She comes running out. And um, she comes to Nabi Akrim sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Akka Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, see her. They say 10 years old, something like that. And um, Akka Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, see her. And brings tears to the eyes of Nabi Akrim sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as well. Because she's lost her father. She's stuck in Mecca. And um, Akka Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam then turns. And Hazrat Ali radiallahu alayhi wa sallam picks her up. And he says, Ya Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, I will take care of her. And uh, she's my cousin. I'm the first to pick her up and so entrust her to me. Hazrat Jafar says, Ya Rasulullah she's my cousin as well, because obviously Hazrat Ali is brother. But my wife is her maternal aunt. So give her to me so that I can look after her. Hazrat Sayyidina Zayd ibn Harith says, O Messenger of Allah, She's the daughter of my fellow Muslim, as they say now, Amir Hamza radiallahu who I loved dearly and everybody loved him. Um, the, you know, the lion of Allah azza wa jal. So therefore, can I have the responsibility for her? Now, can you imagine for Akka Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, it's a very difficult choice. You've got Hazrat Ali radiallahu anhu, You've got Hazrat Jafar who's just come back from Abyssinia. He's, he's one of the great warriors of Islam as well. And Hazrat Zaid radiallahu anhu. So what, look at how beautifully Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam dealt with this. Akka Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, a maternal aunt is equal to a mother. Thus, Umama should be taken care of by Sayyidina Jafar radiallahu because she will have that motherly love from her maternal aunt, her mother's sister. So that was pure justice. But Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to please the others says this, Ali, you are from me and I am from you. Allahu Akbar. Can you imagine the happiness of Sayyidina Ali radiallahu Then he said to Sayyidina Jafar, you resemble me in character and in appearance. So Hazrat Jafar radiallahu is happy as well. And then Akka Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam turned to Sayyidina Zayd radiallahu and said, you are my brother and my freed slave. And that was enough. There was no enmity. There was no um, kind of upset in their hearts because Although uh, the, the daughter of Sayyidina Amir Hamza was given to Sayyidina Jafar to raise, and this was the jazba of the Muslims, everybody wanted to do, you know, raise this orphan child. Um, but Nabi Akrim Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam placated them in such a beautiful way that their, this, this incident itself became a highlight. SubhanAllah. In the same uh, journey, Nabi Akrim Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam married Sayyidina Maimuna radiallahu ta'ala during the journey of the Umrah as well, the Qadha Umrah. And um, there was, uh, incidentally, she passed away um, in uh, four, at the age of 44 years, 
51 Hijri. So all these events um, happened there. And Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam showed the world that no matter what the situation, what the difficulties, that peace, loving character just shone through everywhere. So we moved to the eighth year of Hijrat. And um, this was the year known for the Battle of Muta. This was an area in Sham in Syria. And this was the um, grounds for a major battle between the Muslims and the Christians. It took place in the eighth year of Hijri and the Muslims, a mere 3,000. And the Kuffar, you're not going to believe the figure, 200,000. But despite this, what happened was amazing. And Islam gained such a, an amazing uh, personality and a commander that it was mesmerizing. Nabi Akrim sallallahu alayhi wa sallam sent Sayyidina Ibn Umayr radiallahu ta'ala anhu as an emissary, as a, a, send, a, a taker of a letter. He had a letter addressed to the king of Busra or the Qaisar of Byzantine. Now, he was intercepted by one of the governors and taken to the king. And unfortunately, they were despicable. What they did is they intercepted the letter and martyred him, uh, torturing him to death. Nabi Karim was deeply saddened by this and uh, the brutal nature. But also in the Arabian Peninsula at that time and in the whole of that area, the Middle East, it was, it was a custom that if anybody came as a messenger, because they didn't have phones or anything else, obviously it was messengers who carried commands. So it was custom that no harm should come to a messenger. And so this was despicable and it was treated as such because if you didn't have this system in place, then messages couldn't be exchanged. So you don't, as the old saying says, you don't shoot the messenger because it, it, it was considered wrong. But they did this and they did it out of just spite. And so Akka Krim sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was upset by this and mobilized an army of 3,000 men to fight. Akka Krim sallallahu alayhi wa sallam handed the flag to Hazrat Sayyidina Zaid bin Harith, appointing him as the commander of the army. But look at the vision and the foresight and the ilm the knowledge of the unseen of Nabi Akrim sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. sallallahu alayhi wa says, if Zaid is martyred, then pass the flag to Jafir. If Hazrat Jafir is martyred, then pass the flag to Abdullah ibn Rabaha. And then after that, select a commander from yourselves who will take the flag. Now remember those words very carefully because what happened next was amazing. Nabi Akrim sallallahu alayhi wa sallam bids farewell to the army. The army travel out and they get to a certain place where eventually they decide to stop and take uh, stock. Now, Nabi Akrim sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had also told them that if invite them to Islam before you fight them, if they don't accept, then fight them. But I'm going to give you some conditions. And these, in this day and age, look at this advice that Akka Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam made. And I'll read it to you. The Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that do not martyr or harm or kill the people who are worshipping in the churches. Because it was Christian lands. He said, do not kill the women. Do not go near the children or the elderly. Don't destroy homes. Don't even cut down trees. Subhanallah. This was an era of, you know, barbarianism. This was an era where nobody had rights, and especially in the state of war. But Akka Kareem Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is telling the companions that you are going there to fight, but make sure you do not harm anybody who's innocent, any women, any children. Do not even cut down trees. I mean, how amazing is the lesson for the world? SubhanAllah. So the Muslim army um, depart, and Nabi Kareem Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says to them that um, may Allah bring you back safely and triumphantly. May Allah guard you against all evils. Dua from the best of creation. Now they reach Man. They receive news uh, that Kaiser, the Byzantine uh, emperor, has camped at Al Baqa with 200,000 soldiers. 200,000. So when the Muslims find this out, that we are here to fight, they're close to us, they're here with 200,000 soldiers. There's only 3,000 of them. You know, that would shake the people to their core, not these people. These were so amazing. You know, Akka Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa had taken these normal human beings and made them into super warriors. 
that on receiving the news, Hazrat Sayyidina Zaid bin Harith ordered the troops to set up camp. They notified the Messenger of Allah جل, and awaited instructions. But then Hazrat Abdullah ibn Ruaha says, we Muslims do not fight by numbers. Don't be scared by the numbers. Physical strength or military power isn't what we use. Our strength lies in this religion which Allah has granted us. And by His grace, rise to battle and march forward. One of the two greatest blessings must befall us. Either we will be victorious or we will be martyred. Upon hearing this, every Muslim soldier expressed this yearning to be martyred. Shahadat hai maqsood matloob mumin Martyrdom is the purpose and objective of a believer. Neither spoils of war nor sovereignty. They don't want any of this. All they want to do is please Allah and His Habib The Muslim army marches forward. I mean, it was just a, a mesmerizing sight. They reached Mota and they saw the 200,000 well-prepared army waiting for them. What chance? The 3,000 have against 200,000 well-armed, well-equipped, well-prepared army. But despite being outnumbered 70 to 1, the battle begins. And what happened next is entrenched in the books of history and will remain there till the Day of Judgment. You know, the, the um, companions tore through the safs and eventually Hazrat Sayyidina Zaid bin Harith is martyred. The flag comes to Hazrat Sayyidina Jafar radiallahu ta'ala anhu. He then is martyred and the flag comes to Hazrat uh, Abdullah ibn Rawaha radiallahu ta'ala anhu. He too is martyred eventually. And then they decide. They came together exactly as Nabi Akrim sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had told them. And then they decide to appoint a commander. And what a commander do they appoint? Wallah, Allahu Akbar. This commander was going to change the surface of the earth. This commander was somebody who Allah and his Habib no doubt had chosen for great heights. They gave the flag of Islam to Hazrat Khalid bin Walid radiallahu ta'ala. Now he is appointed the flag bearer of the Muslims and the commander of the army. He was simply magnificent. He broke nine swords and was still going strong. He outsmarted them militarily, intellectually. Everything he did was to perfection. Only had 3,000 men against 200,000. But the way he dealt with it, if you look at the history books of even the non-Muslims, they will tell you that one of the greatest commanders, military commanders, who has ever blessed the surface of the earth was the sword of Allah Azza wa Jal, Hazrat Khalid bin Walid radiallahu ta'ala. Through his courage, military brilliance, Hazrat Sayyidina Khalid bin Walid radiallahu ta'ala outsmarted this army of 200,000. The Muslims gained victory. I mean, you couldn't understand it. It's, it's beyond our comprehension. But this was the, the miracle of Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Twelve companions that were martyred, including Hazrat Harith, Hazrat uh, Jafar bin Abi Talib, Hazrat Abdullah bin Raha, and many other great companions. Now, then the Muslims um, win the battle and they're coming back. Now, they are a long way away. They're in Syria. But everything has been relayed back in Medina Tul Manavra, exactly how it happened. They didn't have TVs in those times, they didn't have live coverage, but they did. How? Listen to this. Allahu Akbar. Nabi Akrim sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was sat with the companions and the veils were lifted. And Akakrim sallallahu alayhi wa sallam could see the battle of Muta taking place in front of his blessed eyes. And Akka Kareem Sallallahu Alaihi was telling the companions that the, you know, through this amazing miracle that this is what's happening. Hazrat Sayyidina Zaid radiallahu is martyred. The flag has been passed to Sayyidina Jafar radiallahu He is fighting bravery. Then he has been martyred. Hazrat Abdullah ibn Rawah is now carrying the flag of Islam. The Muslims are penetrating the army forces. And then tears start to roll down the blessed eyes when these martyrdoms are, you know, Nabi Kareem Sallallahu Alaihi sees them. And then Nabi Kareem Sallallahu Alaihi says this. Zaid took the flag, but was martyred. And it was then taken by Jafar, who was also martyred. And after Abdullah took it, but he too was martyred. Now the flag has been taken. Look at the words, now. Akakrim is seeing this and telling the companions in Medina Now the flag has been taken by the sword of Allah. 
Hazrat Sayyidina Khalid bin Walid radiallahu ta'ala anhu. Like Karim sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is live relaying this to the companions. Subhanallah. Hazrat Imam Musa ibn Uqba narrates in Maghazi that Sayyidina Yahla ibn Umayyah came to the Messenger of Allah bringing news of the Battle of Muta and he asked, are you going to inform me of what has happened or shall I inform you? So Aga Karim sallallahu alayhi wa says, you just come to me now. Do you want me to tell you what happened? Subhanallah. Sayyidina Yala replied, oh Messenger of Allah, please go ahead. When the Messenger of Allah Azzawajal, had finished informing Sayyidina Yala of all that had occurred during the battle, the latter said, I swear by the one who has sent you with the truth, you have not omitted any detail from it, sparing me the need to inform you. Ya Rasulullah I was there. I witnessed it. I've been sent to tell you in advance while the army's coming back. I thought I'd bring you up to date, but Ya Rasulullah you're already up to date because Allah has blessed you with knowledge of the unseen. Subhanallah. Hazrat Sayyidina Asma bint Umay, the wife of Sayyidina Jafar narrates that after I had bathed the children, dressed them up, oiled their hair and kneaded the dough to make bread, the messenger of Allah entered my house and said, bring the children of Jafar to me. When they came before me, the Messenger of Allah Azzawajal began to smell and kiss them while a steady flow of tears came from the eyes of Rasulullah Sallallahu I asked if there was any news regarding Jafar and his companions and the Messenger of Allah replied, yes, today he has been martyred. On hearing this news, I was overwhelmed with grief and my home was filled with women folk coming to pay their condolences. The Messenger of Allah returned to his house and said to his blessed wives, prepare food for the family of Jafar. Allahu Akbar. Nabi Akrim Sallallahu Alaihi look at the compassion. As they say, that Jafar is martyred, and Nabi Akrim Sallallahu Alaihi go to the children and to offer their condolences. SubhanAllah. When Sayyidina Khalid bin Walid and the rest of the army approached Al Madinatul Manavra, Nabi Akrim Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam rode out on horseback to greet them. Um, flanked the men and brought them into Medina. Sayyidina Hassan ibn Thabit radiallahu anhu read poetry in their sound. And alhamdulillah, uh, you know, some of the martyrs um, on that battle, during the battle, um, who had um, died obviously, were brought back to Medina. And, uh, you know, as they say that Jafar radiallahu anhu, they say that uh, during the battle, he had 90 plus wounds but there was no wound on his back. He never turned back once. An army of 200,000, he never turned back once. All his wounds were on the front. and Both of his arms had been severed. And Nabi Akrim Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said this, Allah has given Jafar two wings in Jannah in exchange for his arms. With these wings, he flies to wherever he wishes in Jannah. For this reason, as they Sayyidina Abdullah bin Umar would jeer, greet Sayyidina Abdullah, uh, the son of Sayyidina Jafar, and he would say, Peace be upon you, O son of the possessor of two wings. Subhanallah. Subhanallah. Um, the, after this battle came a very big event. Uh, this was a great battle, a great miracle of Nabi Akrim Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. I mean, just the thought of it. But they fought not with their intellect, not by thinking what they've got, what weapons we've got, what, you know, how many they've got. They fought purely would trust in Allah and his Habib sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And the historians write, from here on, Hazrat Sayyidina Khalid bin Walid radiallahu anhu, the chosen, the one that was chosen during that battle, went on to achieve feats that even today's military tacticians use and think is how amazing it was. And inshallah, we'll come to some of them in later chapters. But he was sent to different parts by the Khulafai Rashidin. And the, the, the amazing things he did I mean, uh, on one occasion, there was an army of 60,000 and he had 3,000 men. Uh, but the way he outsmarted them and, and put an end to them was just magnificent. So this was the great battle where Muslims were given a great, great victory. What comes next, inshallah, is something amazing. Don't miss next week because it was one of the greatest events to take place. And it was a lesson to the world of what to do in the most difficult situations. I will keep you in suspense, and inshallah, we will cover it next week. I'm gonna to move to my next section. Salu ala al-Habib sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The mercy to the world. Subhanallah, so we are looking at easy good deeds. Today, I've got an amazing good deed for you. Because this easy good deed, as our title suggests, is doesn't actually um, take very long, but the reward, 
Um, I think it's a three crore, 24 lakh, but that's the reward you get for doing this particular act. What is it? It is giving the azan. Now, azan Islam in Islam has a very special status. When Nabi Akrim sallallahu alayhi wa sallam asked the question, you know, how shall we invite the Muslims to Islam and what shall we do? And some people suggested ring a bell like the Christians do or do a horn or something else. Hazrat Sayyidina Umar Farooq and one of the companions had seen a dream in which these words were recited. Hazrat Sayyidina Bilal the magnificent Bilal was given the hukum and he recited the azan. And this azan has become a beacon and a call for the Muslims to prayer. And it is so beautiful. I mean, when the azan is being called in the beautiful cities of Makkah and Medina or anywhere around the world, I was in Jerusalem uh, many years ago and there was Masjid Umar and the Azan was being called and it was so beautiful, honestly it made you cry. But giving Azan is a great honour and a great privilege. Nabi Akrim sallallahu alayhi wa sallam on the night of Mi'raj saw beautiful domes made of pearls and diamonds. And Akka Akrim sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Oh Jibreel, who are these for? And Hazrat the Jibreel I mean, uh, humbly replied, Ya Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, these are for the Mu'azzin of your Ummah, those who give Azan. SubhanAllah, you know when you hear the azan, what should we do? Well, Amir al-Sunnah Dawa Barakatul Aliyah um, gives those beautiful madni pearls in the Pious Deeds booklet. And some of you might have seen that. It is an amazing thing. Every night it reminds you of what to do. And every night it gives you gives a bit of an accountability of yourself. Try and get it, you can download the app. If you go to dawatislami.net, you can find the Pious Deeds app. It's a brilliant app. And if you do it, it takes 10 minutes maximum every night, but it will change your life. So Amir al-Sunnah Dan Barakat Mulalia writes in there that, you know, one of the things during the day when you heard Azan, did you reply to it? Now we're talking about the people who give Azan, they've got amazing rewards. Allah Ta'ala will keep them in very special places in Jannah, they've got these domes and everything else. But just the one who listens to Azan is what I wanted to cover today, because we all get this opportunity. And you should do. You know, you have radios from local masajid. Most of our Fezani Medinas, alhamdulillah, Dawat Islami has got um, over 90 buildings in the UK and all over the world there are hundreds. And a lot of the Fezani Medinas, uh, because of the modern technology, they have these boxes that you can keep in your home, radio frequencies are charged, so that when Azan is called in the local Fezani Medina, alhamdulillah, you can hear it in your home and it brings barakats and blessings to your home. If you haven't got it, Contact your local Dawat Islami uh, centre and ask them and they will uh, provide you with one. I think they're not that costly, they're very, very cheap, but it's amazing, you know, from Fajr, Zohar, Asr, Maghrib, Shah, Azan, throughout your house, SubhanAllah, brings so much barakat and blessings, live Azan. And then you can do one other thing if you've got that. Even if or you're in the masjid. Nabi Akrim Sallallahu Alaihi said, Oh women, when you hear Bilal give the Azan or a Kamat, then repeat everything that he says. And for every word that you repeat, Allah Azza wa Jal will give you 100,000 good deeds. 100,000 good deeds will be written for you for every word that you do. So the women said, Ya Rasulullah if this is the reward for us, what is the reward for men? And Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, they get double the reward. What you've got to remember is, that Alhamdulillah at that time, you know, the women were at home and they, they had the opportunity, the men were out working. But even then, that, that's why uh, maybe Allah and His Habib وسلم, gave them the double reward. So, this has been calculated. And can you imagine, this is where the 3.24 million comes from. Because for every word of the Azan, because it says here, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, is two words. So if you go through the Azan, Look at the amazing reward that you can build up in your book of deeds. So if you've got the radio on in your home and the azan is being called in the local masjid and you are listening to it five times a day, every time you listen to it and you reply, and you should, Amir al-Sunnah Dhamma Barakat writes in the Pious Deeds booklet that you should stop everything, put it down, and just listen to the azan and gain these great rewards by replying to it. Um, if you are getting... Uh, 3.24 uh, million good deeds. Every time you listen to the Zan, it's happening five times a day. SubhanAllah, how easy a way is that to fill up the sacks of good deeds so that on the day of judgment, when other things are balanced, at least these will be on the right side and they'll help to counterbalance a lot of the mistakes we made. SubhanAllah. And uh, we should do this uh, regularly. I've got one minute left. I'm just going to go back to my... 
competition so I can give you the answer. So the, an the question today was, which was the first masjid of Islam? And have we had any answers? I haven't got any messages. So, but the correct answer is masjid al Quba, subhanAllah. And what a fantastic masjid it is. And um, there was another hadith of Barakah. If you have the opportunity of going to uh, Medina al Manavra, um, the companions once asked, you know, Ya Rasulullah, we want to go for Umrah, we can't afford it, we can't get to Mecca. Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, whoever can come to Quba and read two rakat nafil will get this, the reward for an Umrah. So Alhamdulillah, a lot of people in the morning, they go to Masjid Nabi Sharif, they pray their Fajr and then they go to Masjid Quba Sharif, Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. So if you do have the blessings of going to Medina from Navra, try and do that as well. You can, you can just walk up to the far corner, get a, a, a a uh, vehicle from there, they don't charge much. Go to Masjid al-Kubashi first thing in the morning. The, the feeling is amazing, subhanAllah. And uh, so that's Masjid al-Kubashi. It's an amazing place. The first Masjid of Islam, Kubashi, where Akka Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam blessed it on the journey of Hijrat. So we come to the end of our session. Salu al habib sallallahu ta'ala. Ala Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa The mercy to the world. The mercy to the world. The mercy to the world, the mercy to the world, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam.